Hello and welcome to Movie Chapter. Today I will show you an adventure, drama, romance film from 2000, titled The Beach. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Richard arrives in Thailand looking for something more exciting. He is staying in a rundown hotel, and when he can't get into his room, a girl, Francoise, who is staying in the next room with her boyfriend Etienne, helps him out. As he lies in bed, he hears them doing the business through the thin walls. Then he is interrupted by a madman from the other room, Daffy. He tells Richard about a secluded beach on a secret, forbidden island. He does not believe such a place exists, but when he returns the next day, he finds a map pinned to his door. He goes to check on Daffy, but finds that he has taken his own life. After talking to the police, he shows his neighbors the map and tells them about the secret island. They all seem excited to go where no tourist does, and Etienne figures out the logistics. They travel 500 miles in one day and end up on a beach somewhere. Etienne points out that the island is a national park and off-limits, but they can get to a nearby island and swim from there. Once again, Richard cannot get into his room, because this time he lost his key, but the two surfers next to him invite him to join them. They talk about the mythical island with a perfect beach with pure white sand and crystal clear water, but think it's just an urban myth. Before Richard continues his journey the next day, he leaves them a copy of the map. They take a boat to their second to last destination and camp through the night. Richard is awakened by Francois taking pictures of the night sky. He says that there's probably a planet like theirs somewhere in the infinite universe, with another version of them photographing back. She says it's the usual pretentious crap Americans always say to French girls to sleep with them. The next day, the trio tries to estimate the distance they have to swim, thinking they won't make it if it's too far, but Richard exclaims, if we don't try, we will never know, and excitedly jumps in. After a long, exhausting swim, they finally reach the shore. They head inland and find a massive hemp plantation. Richard notices a monkey tied by a string to a sleeping man with an AK-47. The monkey wakes him up and the three hide in the field. A bunch of other guards show up and start looking for them. The monkey finds them, but Richard sprays it with water, and they manage to get out unnoticed. After this, the couple starts getting second thoughts, but Richard is determined to find the paradise on Earth, so they follow. The group heads downstream and reaches a waterfall over a massive cliff. The boys argue about how to get down, but Francoise just jumps and encourages the others, so they follow shortly after. They cheer and shout because of the exhilarating experience, but are suddenly interrupted by a man named Kitty, clapping. He says it took him an hour to muster up the courage to jump. He then takes them to the village. They expected a couple of passing travelers staying in caves, but find a thriving community that actually lives here long term, and realize they weren't even invited. They are taken to the leader of the community, Sal, and show her the map Duffy made. She tells them that Daffy was one of the founders of the community, but he went insane. She explains that they value their privacy and asks if they made a map for anyone else. They all deny it, and she seems satisfied and burns the map. The trio is taken to the beach at a lagoon with crystal clear blue water, enveloped by cliffs. They take in its beauty, thrilled that they have actually reached their destination, and it is as magical as described. That evening as they are winding down, Richard feels that he has finally found a place where he belongs. The next day Sal explains how the community works. They grow their own food and build their own houses, and are almost self-sufficient. They only have to sail back to civilization once in a while to trade some grass for rice. It was agreed with the farmers on the other side of the island that they would not be bothered as long as more people did not come to the island and their hemp was not stolen, so they grow their own. The three Swedes teach them spear fishing and Richard gets the hang of it pretty quick. The community has a range of sporting and leisure activities for all tastes. The only person Richard dislikes is Sal's boyfriend Bugs, their carpenter, because he mocks Richard for being a freeloader. The community has a tradition for the last arrived member to tattoo the next. It really was paradise, but there was something else he desired. One day, as Richard is staring at Francoise, Kitty comes up and tells him all the reasons he can never be with her. 
Shortly after, one of the guys says he wants to go to the mainland to see a dentist, but Sal denies it. Richard understands that sometimes people have to endure a little pain to keep their secret. They pull his tooth out with pliers. That night, Francoise invites Richard for a walk on the beach. She confesses that she likes him a lot, but it's difficult for her to spend time with him because she's with Etienne. They go for a swim in the glowing water and start making out. They promise each other to keep it a secret. Not long after, Etienne confronts Richard about his relationship with his girlfriend. He tries to play dumb, but Etienne says everybody already knows about it. Even though he is heartbroken, he makes it clear that he will not stand in their way because he just wants her to be happy, even if it is with Richard. On one of these days it's pouring rain. Christo explains that it is difficult to catch fish because of the poor visibility. The rain can last for weeks, and sometimes they get really hungry. Richard decides to try his luck, grabs Christo's gear and swims out into the lagoon. When he turns around, he sees the other members panicking, but can't hear them. He then notices a shark fin and frantically starts to swim to shore, but the shark chases after him. The scene cuts back to the community house and he recounts how he managed to overpower the shark. Everyone cheers him on, but Bugs is not impressed because it was just a baby shark. Richard puts him in his place, though, and they go to sleep. Sometime later, Sal informs the community that their rice has been contaminated by a fungus, which means that someone will have to travel to mainland for a shopping trip. For some reason, nobody volunteers so she asks Richard to accompany her. He seems hesitant, but he isn't really given a choice. One by one, the members give him their shopping list, consisting mainly of snacks, batteries, and hygiene items, but also a bunch of other things they can't come by here. Lastly, Bugs comes up, grabs him by the balls, and tells him to keep his hands to himself and the little Richard in his pants. He had been looking forward to the air conditioning and cold beer, but when they got there he remembered all the reasons he wanted to leave in the first place. He also understood why Sal was trying so hard to keep the beach a secret, because if they didn't, it would soon turn into this. After they finish their shopping, he and Sal sit in a pub. They are interrupted by the surfer dudes and their girlfriends. Richard is introduced as the man with the map and Sal hears this. The surfer group seems super excited to visit the island, so Richard tells them that the map was fake and the beach does not exist. They don't believe him, thinking he's just holding out on them. This infuriates Richard, so he lashes out at them. Afterwards, Sal asks if he made them a copy of the map, but Richard, not wanting to confess, says that he only mentioned where he was going and they only saw it once. She breathes a sigh of relief thinking they don't have it in them to get there without a map. Sal explains that she'll keep it a secret, goes to play pool with a friend, and instructs Richard to warm the bed. Later, they perform some pair yoga exercises. It was payment for her silence and his ticket back to the island. When they return, Richard hands out all the orders to the grateful members. He brings Francoise a disposable camera, but she asks if anything happened on the rice run, because people have been saying that Sal is attracted to him. Not wanting to spoil the moment, Richard promises her that nothing happened and they return to normal. Francoise takes a picture of the group. One day, while Richard is lying in a hammock playing a game, he hears panicked screams. When he goes outside, he finds that the Swedes have suffered a shark attack. One of them is missing a chunk of his leg and has a bite wound on his torso. He follows the trail to the beach and finds Christo with a bite in his leg, gasping in pain. He is brought inside, where Sal offers to take him to the hospital, as long as he doesn't reveal their location. He begs for them to bring help here because he is now terrified of water and doesn't want to go anywhere near it. Sal denies his request and tells him to either go or stay here and take his chances. The members pay their respects to Christo's friend and bury him. After the funeral, they tried going back to normal, but Christo's constant painful cries agitated the group. Richard ponders that after a major tragedy, one should either recover or die, so everyone can say what a good guy you were and move on. It's the hanging around in between that really irritates people. The group decides to take Christo to a tent in the woods, ignoring Etienne's pleas. Shortly after, the community went back to normal. 
Out of sight, out of mind. Sometime later, Sal takes Richard to the other side of the island and shows him the surfers holding a map. She reiterates that the farmers told them no more people, but now it looks like they are handing out tour guides. Sal is furious and orders him to be here every day until they arrive to turn them away and get the map. Richard points out that they could be there for weeks, but she doesn't care. That night, Francoise comes and slaps him. Sal told everyone what happened on their trip. He knew it would happen, but was crushed nonetheless. As days pass, he finds new ways to entertain himself. He starts sneaking around the farmers and observing their daily activities. He pretends to be in a video game. The longer he stayed away from the community, the less he missed them. He found new players, even if they didn't know it yet. He starts messing with the farmers. The forest is his territory, the mission is to retrieve the map, farmers are his defenders and the surfers are the invaders. He slowly starts losing his sanity and gets visions about Daffy. One day Kitty comes to check on him and finds him completely out of it. He tells Richard to pull himself together because he can't keep running around in the dark, not talking to anyone. However, he does not get through to Richard. He starts making traps in the woods, still having visions of Daffy. Daffy led the way, showed him the truth. Richard won't let him down. He starts sneaking around the farmer's homes, touching their weapons while they sleep. He takes one of the guy's headbands. The day has come. The surfers approach on a raft and soon reach the shore. Richard watches their every move. When they reach the hemp field, they think they're in heaven and start dancing around and singing. This attracts the attention of the guards, who approach with weapons drawn. They notice the guards and tell them it was a mistake coming here and they will leave immediately. When that does not work, they offer them money. The situation escalates, and when a surfer approaches one of the farmers, he pulls the trigger. Panic breaks out and two more are shot, leaving only one girl. Richard gets into position and hisses at her as soon as she reaches the end of the field. This causes Richard to pause for a moment and he finally seems to snap back to reality. One of the farmers runs after him but gets caught in the trap. Richard reaches the waterfall. Oh, there goes gravity. Richard gets to the camp where they celebrate six years living here. Sal makes a toast to many more years to come. As Richard lurks in the shadows, he can't remember the person he once was and thinks he won't find him again as long as he stays on this island. He intercepts Francoise and tries to persuade her to leave with him. She takes him to the tent and Richard tries to convince the three of them to leave, but Etienne can't leave Christo here. He has gangrene in his leg and it's spreading. Meanwhile the party is going hard. Richard tells them to wait for him at the boat, implying that he will take care of the Christo situation. They run off, but the farmers intercept them. Richard puts Christo out of his misery. He suffered because they refused to let anything spoil their fun. When Richard leaves the tent he's knocked out. The party is interrupted by the farmers. The senior farmer explains his frustrations about more people coming here with maps, threatening his livelihood and ability to send money to his family. He orders them to leave the island and everyone but Sal agrees. Richard tries to convince her, but she yells at him to be quiet because it's all his fault anyway. The farmer realizes that he was the one sneaking around, playing with their guns, and also leading new people here. He hands Sal a revolver with a single bullet and gives her the option to stay if she kills Richard. Bugs pins him to the pole. Richard begs for mercy, but Sal is determined. He says that, unlike with Christo, this time everyone will see what it takes to keep their paradise going. She says they can take it and pulls the trigger, but it's a blank. Richard starts laughing. The senior farmer smirks as the community crumbles and its members leave. Everyone except Sal left on a raft and went back to their normal lives. Richard is at an internet cafe checking his email and finds the group photo from Francoise. Paradise is not the place you go to, but a moment in life when you feel that you belong. Once you find it, it lasts forever. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.